Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redemption. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trinity Episcopal Church in Midtown, it is uh, good to be with you, even if it is uh, virtually so on uh, this Sunday morning as we celebrate all saints and all the faithful uh, departed. Our ancient tradition, as handed down through the people of Israel, accentuated in and through Jesus' own ministry and emulated in the first Christian communities like those of John's community, the Johannine community, understand and understood that Christ invites us into a new family. He suggests new familial relationships, that you and I, we are brothers and sisters. It is a, a suggestion beyond tribalism. Uh, followers of God, and so the children of God, as the Eucharistic prayer of baptism says, we are made citizens in God's kingdom. Words that have great meaning for those who are preparing for baptism, like uh, Katie Gulick, right? Uh, that she is becoming part of the family, not just the Trinity family, but the family of God. We are made a family by God's love, a binding love, a common making love unleashed upon creation. There is a promise uh, that this first experience of communal love and love for neighbor, stranger, and enemy is just the first fruits of God's fulfilling love and that there is a sure and certain hope of things promised but not seen. This is, after all, the Easter proclamation uh, as we remember in our All Saints Day celebration, the celebration of the faithful departed, here is the love we proclaim in faith at the graveside of our beloved sisters and brothers. This year, of course, I, uh, uh, knowing Trinity, uh, am very well aware of our losses like Joy uh, Cottrell and Willia Green or those whom we love but we see no longer, those whose names are written upon our hearts, uh, especially on this day of all days. You might yourself have people in mind that you're remembering. It is a hope that reminds us that we will one day be reunited. Uh, so goodbyes like to our dear friend and Verger Kevin Smith, with whom we rejoice about his forthcoming marriage, but whom we miss, becomes merely a so long for our faith will one day bring us back together. It is a hope and a faith of life well lived, like Dorothy Church, who has turned 95 since my last visit. Here is the great meaning of the family of God, brothers and sisters of the Most High, all the saints who surround us on every side, citizens of a great kingdom, the community of John, you see, the, the Johannine community reminds us that our work is a work of love for John and his readers and the community to serve the good and the one who is good and how this flows out of our love and connection for God, first of all. It is seek to be like the God who loves. We are to love as God loves. Love, 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 Christians, this is your call, says that old fisher folk song we used to sing at Camp Allen. I like how Bill Loader, a New Testament professor, says it. It's not about how many morality boxes we can tick to qualify ourselves as righteous or as a child of God. It's about whether love flows. Here, too, it is not about how many acts of love we summon up our energies to perform, ticking the goodness boxes, if you will, but how much we open ourselves to receive the love which God gives, which in turn flows through us to others uh, out in the world. Love gives birth to love. Loder continues, later the author of 1 John will speak of 
are loving because we were first of all loved by God. Chapter 4, verse 19. The author might say today, no amount of doing good deeds and no amount of having impressive spiritual experiences will count for anything if it is not connected to a real change that is relational. It may be cosmetic goodness, Loder suggests, might even be called religion, but without that love, it's nothing much. Paul made the same point, didn't he, in 1 Corinthians 13. We know that lesson well from the marriage ceremonies. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong, a clanging cymbal. You all at Trinity over this last year, even in the midst of COVID tide, you have served meals for the homeless neighbors during the pandemic, working like other Episcopalians seven days building new partnerships, you are a voting site, you uh, are gathering online, uh, and soon we'll be doing that in person. You have uh, created space uh, for AAs to resume meeting again in person. You have refurbished the entire limestone of the church, which brings a, a magnificent look to the only Ralph Adams Cram church in Texas. And you've engaged conversations about racism while caring for each other and pastoring each other. It's true that these are amazing accomplishments. Uh, they make your bishop proud of you and your leadership, your stewardship, your support for the church's mission. And I know in the end, it is not these things that are miraculous, but it is you who are so. That in the end, it is the people and the relationships and the love that you share during this time that you will remember, for which you will be remembered. You see, we are saints and children of God because God makes us so because God loves us. We are the beloved of God, and our response to this belovedness is to turn love towards others. This is the chief, if not primary, work of community. New Testament scholar David Bartlett wrote, we get Christian hope a little bit confused when we think that our hope is based on how nice we are or how well we behave or on some hidden piece of us called the soul that will survive through death and destruction. But the truth is that we are truly at our best when those things that we do, the challenges we take on, the work, the mission, the prayer and liturgical life, that it flows not out of a sense of duty, but rather, as the author of our passage from 1 John proclaims, out of a response to a God who is love. Many things will pass away or be left incomplete. Even COVID, storms and hurricanes, partisan politics and elections, all will pass away. But not so with a love that comes from God and through us into the world here we're able to understand, you see, Matthew's passage, lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth where moth or rust doth corrupt and consume, right where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupt and where thieves cannot break in. Matthew's passage about the Beatitudes that near the suffering, when we draw near, there is love. Near the cross, we find resurrection. Near death, we find life. Near sacrificial love for each other, we will find eternity. So yes, indeed, uh, Trinity and Midtown, continue your good work by all means. You are the saints. You are the faithful. But most of all, be a place of kinship through Christ where love uh, from Christ is known and shared, and so that you truly become a center, a beating heart of love in Midtown. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.